Okay, getting into beglery, the ins and outs. I'm gonna show you. If you're new to beglery, you just started playing with beglery and you're trying to get into it, progress a little better, but you're having trouble. Or you're just new to it altogether. I'm gonna try to break it down and kind of give you pointers. I'll tell you what you need to do. So it's really not that hard. Now, let's say you don't already have a set of beggary. If they're really easy to make, all you need are hex nuts and a shoelace. And that's pretty much the easiest way to make your own little set. You're just gonna thread them through. And it doesn't matter the size of hex nuts that you use, just as long as the shoelace fits. So like, for example, this would be a really good beginner set. You could cut it to whatever length desired. Okay, I kind of like it like this long. That's how I measure it. That's about as long as I like it. Then I would like make a knot. And that would be my set. I'd cut the end right here. Burn it. That way it melts. I didn't have any fraying going on. Let it dry. Let it dry. And basically, you have yourself a little homemade do-it-yourself bangery set before you can afford one if you can't afford one already. So if you already have a set of beggary or you've already created your own do-it-yourself model, um, what I'm doing right here, all this that I'm doing right here, I didn't learn it overnight. So you're not going to be able to do it overnight. Don't stress yourself over it. It's all baby steps, right? So here's something simple that you can start off with just so you can get the feel of how it feels. Try just swinging it in your hand. These are the things that I did when I first got into it. And doing circles, doing circles. All single grip is what this is called because you're not you're not leaving the grip at all. So this is something that's simple and easy to get started with. Now you can work on controlling the motion of your circles that you do. And when you get to the point where you're starting to feel more comfortable, you can bounce off the top of your hand, under your hand top of your hand, under your hand, and just keep doing that. And you're gonna get the hang of it, like however long your string is, the cord that you, the length that you choose, you can still do this. And so, this is just to get used to the rhythm. I find that listening to music is a good way to work on your timing. Because if you listen to music, you can try to go to the beat. Go to the beat. And like, that's a good way to practice on your rhythm and your timing. Now, okay, so now let's say you have this down already. You have your little, the, I guess they're called rebounds. I'm guilty for not knowing the proper names. So this is not, this is not a, a video that will explain the names of tricks because I don't even know what they are. I just play with the toy. <laughs> I just play with it. So I, I don't really concern myself with names. But, <laughs> so yeah, besides all that, uh, here's something that you can work on for rolls, okay? So if you want to start getting into rolls, I don't suggest that you start them right away 
because you still need to get used to wrapping. Practice the wrapping motion. Practice transfers, which would be that. That would be a transfer. So these are, these are all beginner things that you can practice on. Just don't do them as fast as you. I know the pace is so, is so fast and everybody just like spins right through everything. Every time you see a video, a clip, everybody's just going over every little thing through their fingers. It looks like magic, it's so fast. But you're a beginner, so you don't have to feel that pressure of going fast. Just take your time and slow down your pace. Slow your roll, and you can find little things that are natural for you to do. And that's what I did, and that's how I started. So yeah, back to rolls. Okay, you want to start learning how to do rolls and controlling them, and you're already at the comfortable point where you can where you can do that. Practice wrapping around your finger all the way and stopping. Get used to doing that. Just wrapping one finger. You can start with the first finger. You can you can even start with a middle finger. It doesn't mean doesn't matter which finger you, you start off with. It's just you're just going to learn how to wrap it, unwrap it. Okay? That's what a roll is. It's just a wrap that keeps unwrapping. When you get to the end, is when you throw your other finger in to catch it. That way it doesn't fly and hit somebody or something. So yeah, remember that a roll is just a wrap. That's all it is. And you are gonna get used to how it feels. You'll know what it feels like to get out of it, to complete it. As long as you practice wrapping one whole time around the finger. Practice that over and over and it'll give you that feeling that you need to get comfortable with, that you need to become aware of. Like once you know you're getting to the end, that's when you will unwrap it, you will continue the wrap. So it's like you get to this end, this bead, all you have to do is gently tug your finger upward. Okay, so a roll is just a wrap that you're unwrapping on that one finger. So remember that. So that way when you get used to wrapping completely once and then tugging upward with your finger, that will give you the momentum to finish and complete that roll or the wrap. So you're wrapping practice doing that. Just stop in the middle of it because you're learning it anyway. So there's no rules to learning. So you're going to wrap all the way around the finger, tug upward. You can feel the motion. It's kind of like up and down and up and down. And that's what's going to help you get out of the wrap and complete it. But you'll find that if you just hold your finger still after you gently tug it upward, you just do it faster. If you hold it still, it will unwrap itself. Did you see that? So just practice doing that. And this is how you will get your rolls down. It will make it so much easier. Before you know it, you'll be rolling with two fingers. You'll do the two finger roll. You'll do the three finger roll. You'll do a thumb roll. Like everything will come to you once you get your basics down. So that's, rolls is one thing that you can work on. Uh, wraps is another, just wrap your finger, just wrap your finger. It's gonna seem like you're gonna wanna do a whole lot more things faster. Cause I know I had that learning curve. I wanted to 
I wanted to be good in a hurry. Like I wanted to already be at a level that I wasn't ready for yet. So don't try not to discourage yourself by forcing yourself to learn something that it's going to take you time to learn anyway. But while you're doing it, you're going to have fun because it's all discovery. You're discovering what you can do with these beads and a cord. And there's just so many things that can be done. It's just the simple stuff that you need to get used to first before you can tackle all the other inventive things that you'll probably come up with. And that's what I do. Because there's a lot of things that I don't do. I don't I don't do the same tricks that everybody else does. I kind of make up my own tricks. Um, that's why I don't know the names of them. I've probably seen them before, I've probably done it before, but when someone tells me the name of a trick and I don't, I can't respond to it because they don't know what it is, it's because I don't go through tutorials. When I got into beggary, I just started discovering what I could do and I kind of came up with, with my own little set of tricks that I was able to do. And so that makes it a little bit hard for me to communicate with other beggary players because they watch tutorials and that's how they learned how to get into it and, and what to do. And I can't really uh, communicate because I don't know the names of tricks. But I have been doing the copycat challenge and that's helping me learn names of tricks now. So, you know, that's, that's a good thing for me. And it challenges me because it's, they're tricks that I don't normally do. They're tricks that I'm learning. So if you follow me on Instagram and you see that I'm trying to, I'll put an attempt on the copycat if I don't complete it properly or if I messed up on something. But if I did complete it, it won't have that. It'll just say copycat. And pretty much everything you see on a copycat challenge that I post up are things that have elements I don't know how to do that I have taught myself and you only have it's a, it's a game that only has like 24 hours to learn whatever it is you're trying to do and then you have to film it upload it and it goes through a judging approval state so anyway yeah so those are roles if you do a roll into another roll which is another finger and continue that roll, that's called a ladder. So if you're going from one finger to another finger, so if you're going from one finger to another finger, that's a ladder. You're going down a ladder, you're going up a ladder. You have to think of it like, you know, walking up a ladder or walking down a ladder and just keep going down here. I'm still not very good at that. I, I still work on it myself because I'm not the best at that. Oh, I started doing two hand stuff because I'm just used to using two hands when I do any skill toys. So because of that, yeah, a little background, a little background on me. I used to play with Astro Jacks a lot, and I was sponsored for Astro Jacks. And that was a three ball string toy that was the beginning of Monkey Knuckles. Monkey Knuckles came after that. And uh, so I learned how to use both of those and play with both. And then Beglery was introduced to me by David Shy Guy. He was a friend of mine on Facebook, on Instagram, and he started to post up pictures and videos using the beggary and Combo Life, and I was pretty much uh, interested in the beggary more. I liked the beggary, I liked how it looked. Uh, that was something I thought that I could probably get into. And it's funny because I tried to look up the history of beggary, and it's a, it's Related to Kombolai, Kombolai is also called Worry Beads. I don't know if Begri is also called Worry Beads, but it's in the same family and it comes from Greece. So uh, what I found, and I don't know like how far back it's a traditional toy, but it's the gentleman's toy, which means that it was initially 
a man's fidget tool, something that he used if he were, it had nothing to do with his hands, you know, it was, it was meant for that. But it was interesting because I looked it up and I found out that women were forbidden to use or touch or be seen in public trying to even play with a beggary. Now that was back in the early, early beginnings. And I can't tell you what year because I can't remember right now. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because, you know, that's tradition. That was the tradition of, of the time at that time. And, you know, we're in 2017 now. So, you know, there is no limitations. And it's good to understand the history of something that you're involved with or a new hobby, a new skill. Anything that you're getting into, it's good to understand the background of it, where it came from. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's interesting. And it might have been religiously connected. Maybe that's what it was. I mean, I'm not really sure. I didn't know that part of it. <coughs> now, back to... Beggary. Okay, so another thing that you can work on if you want to get into two-hand stuff, which you don't have to, but if you feel like you want to, this is something that's easy to do. It's just passing from one hand to another hand and getting the feel of, of when to grab it, the timing of how long it takes for the swing to happen. Then you can Swing it upward, swing it upward, and that's something that you keep the motion going. When you, when you keep the motion going, that's called flow. When you go into one motion and you keep on to another motion, you link these motions together, that's called flow. And you can flow even if you don't know tricks, just as long as you're moving it to a rhythm to a time, you know, it, could, it doesn't even have to be anything, you can just be making it up as you go along, and that's what I did, I freestyle. So, just keep that in mind, that it's, it's not supposed to be something that's difficult and frustrating, it's supposed to be a discovery tool, and you're supposed to have fun discovering what you can do with it, and everyone can do something different. You know, of course, we all want to learn the fancy tricks, and we all want to be as good as the fancy players. But we all have our own way of playing, and I'd say embrace that, and don't be shy, and don't feel like you're not you're not learning anything because anything that you are doing is a learning process, and you just have to keep up with it and just keep practicing with it, and before you know it you'll just get better at it. Just with muscle memory, so you're going to remember how it feels to do things. A lot of times I'm not even looking at what I'm doing. And that's just because I'm so used to how it feels to move it around in all the ways that I've already discovered that I could have my eyes closed and I can still play with the toy and I know where it is on my hand at what time it's spinning, at what time it's moving, how the chord feels. It's all senses. I mentioned this on a group I'm in for beggary, and uh, what I was talking about was your eyes can deceive you. Your eyes can, can play tricks on you. If you're just looking at what you're doing, some people find that uh, they can't do it. It, they have to not, they have to look away because if they're looking at what they're doing, they're probably going to mess up. And that's only because you're using your sense of touch and that it's good not to be able to look at it, it's to see what it is that you're doing. And if you can look away and still be able to, to move your beggary the way it needs to be moved and, and all that, that just means that you're remembering how it feels and that's it's a good sense to to heighten your sense of touch but yeah so those are a few things that you can work on wraps single grip play rolls which is just a wrap that continues 
So I hope this helps you.